Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good afternoon everybody, this is Professor Vikas Medi. So today I am going to discuss about what are the medicine available, pharmacotherapy of glaucoma. You might have noticed that every year we used to have glaucoma day. This is basically the people become should be aware of the disease, underlying disease of glaucoma because this is a common cause of blindness also. What I am going to do is with the presentation that will define the glaucoma, we try to look at the what are the cause people are suffering from glaucoma, what is the underlying pathophysiology and look at the medicine and different classification medicine and what are the treatment available and also future treatment options available for glaucoma. Now, moment you say glaucoma, it is a group of disease, it is characterized by a progressive form of optic nerve damage. Basically, you give the treatment because you wanted to prevent that optic nerve damage because of the high pressure. Normally, if you look at the human body, we have a tissue pressure. If you look at the cranium, we have intracranial pressure. But compared to any of the pressure of the tissue, in eye, this pressure is very high. And this high pressure is because in eye, it has to maintain the optical properties. So normally, the ocular pressure is around 16 to 23. Now if it is beyond 23 or 22, so definitely the person will complain of the headache if pressure is increased, the dimness of his vision. So that is why that eye disease, any of the reason that intraocular pressure is increased beyond 21 mm mercury. So the person typically present with the glaucoma symptoms. Now the reason behind why there is an increase of pressure, there could be increased production of aqueous humor or at the same time, the production is okay with a normal rate, physiological rate, but there is no drainage of aqueous humor because the drainage is blocked or it can damage the optic nerve of the eye result of permanent visual loss. So this is a more concern that we want to treat the glaucoma because we wanted to prevent that optic nerve damage. That is why we need to treat the glaucoma person. Now, <clears throat> as you discuss, typical symptoms you find there is an elevated increased intraocular pressure and patient will also present with corneal thickness. There could be family history or there could be ethnic background and as the age progresses typically beyond 50 years, chances of glaucoma is more, particularly in female and glaucoma mostly it affect both the eyes. It is not the single eye is affected, it is both the eyes. Now when you try to look at the risk factor for glaucoma, one is person with hypermetric eye, Sp typically uh, the person having a small eye or once a person crossed the fifth decade after 50 years, female are more prone to have compared to the male and it also maintain a diurnal variation. It maintain a diurnal variation, morning and evening the pressure is deeper and particularly pressure is increased in case of higher rainy season and when there is a dim light, 
his intraocular pressure risk increases. Now, what happened in untreated glaucoma? If it is untreated or unattended, that result to gradual damage of optic nerve. So, initially it is manifested by there is a loss of or may be blurring of vision, side vision with headache or it may be unilateral or there is may be loss of central vision or total blindness. So, visual loss in glaucoma which is irreversible. One has to be very, very careful that it is irreversible. So, treatment should be at the earliest should be done. Now, what is the reason for increased intraocular pressure? So, if you look at the pathogenesis, there is elevated intraocular pressure, there may be excitotoxic damage of excessive amount of release of glutamate and glycine or underlying there is oxidative damage or there is apoptosis to the neuron and at the same time when the pressure is increases, you can see there is remodeling of extracellular matrix protein. Now, these are happen in the molecular aspect in during the pathogenesis of glaucoma. Now, there are many theories of glaucoma, why intraocular pressure is rise following this pathogenesis. So, if you look at the theory, one is mechanical theory. Now, what happened in mechanical theory that typically you find there is intraocular pressure and reason for increased intraocular pressure is mechanical stress to lamina cripsa or there is external deformation of altered capillary blood flow which result decreased neurotropic to reach the retinal ganglionic cells. So, these are pathogenesis take place because of increased intraocular pressure. Now, another theory is excitotoxicity theory. Now, in excitotoxicity theory as you see that excitatory amino acid are released like glutamate, like glycine or oxygen free radicals or nitric oxide. These are going to damage the optic nerve or retinal cells. So, these are the theory that how there is a damage to the optic nerve and there is a visual loss. So, that is what based on this pathogenesis and based on this molecular mechanism, there are you can see that you can classify there are two principal clinical forms of glaucoma. One you typically call is open angle glaucoma that means there is a wide angle or chronic simple glaucoma and basically it is a age related. Age related thinking, thickening of sclerosis of trabecula and that is the reason the aqueous humor is formed, but there is no drainage or there could be absence of giant vehicles in a cell lining canals of scale where there is a drainage take place. So, it prevent the drainage. So, there is more aqueous humor form and increase intraocular pressure. Now, another form is angle closure glaucoma which is narrow acute congestive glaucoma. So, there are two type one is open angle glaucoma and second is angle closure or close angle glaucoma is there. <clears throat> now, when you as you know that by now you need to understand that treatment should be start immediately as early as possible. The aim of the treatment that you want to decrease the intraocular pressure. Now, question is how you are going to decrease the intraocular pressure. One thing that you can give the drug which target decreased production of aqueous humor or Another way you can do is can you increase the drainage of aqueous humor from the eye if there is a closure or there is a blockage of the canal of scam. So, the medication you can say that mainly topical application in order to decrease the intraocular pressure or if it is required mechanical 
there is a surgical option to open up the drainage or sometimes you might have to combine both medication as well as surgical option. Now, when you select the drug, different drug that is you can call it ocular hypotensive drug. Now, these are the drug it act on different part of the eyes and you get a beneficial effect. Like suppose the drug acting on sphincter people, sphincter means where the people there is a small and bigger. So, basically sphincter people has contraction of sphincter people muscles and it remove the pupillary block and reverse the obliteration of intracorneal angles. So, if you give a myotics class of drug in ankle closure glaucoma definitely it will have a beneficial or the drug acting on ciliary muscles. So, this help in contraction of ciliary muscle spool or in a sclera improve the trabecular pathway. So, the myotics in open angle glaucoma it has beneficial or in ciliary body it reduce the formation of aqueous humor from the ciliary bodies. So, you can select some of the beta blockers like timolol or alpha agonist or you can also use carbonic anhydrase inhibitors that will reduce the formation of aqueous humor or you can target ebuscleral outflow. So, basically if you target ebuscleral outflow it increase the ebuscleral outflow by altering the pathway of pressure gradient. So, some of the drug you can name is like prostaglandin or sympathomimetic drug like adrenaline or you can select trabecular outflow which increase the aqueous conductivity of trabecular you know filtering cells that is same sympathomimetic like adrenaline or beta 2 agonist. So, you can see that how the drug is act in different area sphincter people ciliary muscles, ciliary bodies, ebuscleral pathway outflow, trabecular outflow by giving different drug. So, definitely all these drug act as ocular hypotensive drug and that is how we can manage the patient by giving ocular hypotensive drug. Now, the target for reduction of aqueous humor formation. As we mentioned earlier ciliary body like if you target a site of action of ciliary blood vessels. So, if you give a drug like alpha 1 adenoreceptors it causes constriction of ciliary vessels. If you stimulate alpha 1 it is going to cause constriction of ciliary vessels. So, if there is a constriction of ciliary vessels there will be decrease aqueous humor formation. Similarly, drug like alpha 2 adenoreceptor it act on ciliary body epithelium it reduce the formation of aqueous humor or beta blocker if you give ciliary epithelium beta blocker what it does it enhance the aqueous humor secretion via increased cyclic AMP. So, another one is when you give carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, it act on ciliary epithelial cell. So, what happen in carbonic anhydrase? It generate bicarbonate ions which secreted in aqueous humor. So, there are different you know target for reduction of aqueous humor by giving the drug you can reduce the aqueous humor. So, in order to reduce the intraocular pressure. There are option of various option of drugs in order to reduce aqueous humor production. One of the example alpha adrenergic agonist. Second is we have a selective beta blockers. Then we have a group of drug which act as a carbonic anhydrase inhibitors or you can give a medication that increase the aqueous humor outflow. Like for example, if you take an example of myotics, basically these are anticholinergic drug or you can select prostaglandin analogs 
or you can select ryokinase inhibitor. This is a new group of drug which is used in treatment of glaucoma. So, take an example of alpha adrenergic agonist. What it does? It does reduction of aqueous humor or it also increased the outflow of aqueous humor. You can take a various example like apraclonidine, like brimolidine, epinephrine, depriverine, depriverine. So, there are a number of examples we have in therapeutic practice, but one has to be careful that all these drugs might also causes allergic reaction. You take a detailed history of allergy also before you give it to the patient. If there is no history of allergy, then you can dispense the drug. Another group of drug which is very, very commonly used in order to reduce intraocular pressure is beta blockers, selective beta blockers. Now, these beta blockers it reduce intraocular pressure by reducing aqueous humor production and decreasing the rate at which the fluid flow into the eye. Typical example we can give is timolol, very, very commonly used, levobulol, cartelol, metipronol or butaxolol. So, these are very commonly used beta blockers, selective beta blockers in as a ocular hypertensive patient. Third group of drug we discuss is carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. Now, this carbonic anhydrase inhibitors basically it act as reduce the fluid production in eyes. This has several other then ocular use also carbonic anhydrase. Typical example of using carbonic anhydrase is dorzolamide, brinzolamide. Of course, older drug is acetazolamide which is oral medication and methazolamide it is given orally. So, there are new carbonic anhydrase inhibitors and there are existing already established carbonic anhydrase inhibitors which is commonly used. Now, what is the role of myotics? Myotics are basically cholinergic agent that causes people to become much smaller than the diameters. So, when people become constrict, it will help to increase the fluid drainage from this eye. So, typically we use the drug like pilocarpine or echo theoplate, commonly used is pilocarpine. So, this the role of myotics because it help in drainage of aqueous humor. So, you can reduce the ocular pressure. Now, another group of drug is prostaglandin analogs. It reduce the eye pressure, intraocular pressure by outflow of fluid from the eye. So, for example, if you take tarflu prost ophthalmic solution, latanoprost, bimatoprost, trabuprost. So, there are so many example of prostaglandin an analog and some of these are ophthalmic solution like isopropyl ophthalmic solution or latanoprost ophthalmic solution. So, there are some examples of ophthalmic solution and use of prostaglandin analog. One of the class is used now is reokinase inhibitors. This is also used in in order to reduce the ocular pressure. Now, what is the role of combination? Combination means combination of eye drop may also use in achieving better result. For example, you give drogelamide with timolol. Latanoprost with timolol or any of the AC uh, carbonic anhydrase inhibitor with 
beta blockers. So, combination some of the study shows a better efficacy with treatment alone. Now, as you see that we have a medication in order to reduce the intraocular pressure, but sometimes we have to also go for a surgical option or maybe both the option you have to take it. Typically, nowadays people use the laser surgery. So, we have a laser therapy, we have a trabeculoplasty, we have a laser peripheral aridectomy or there are different surgical options are available. This is required when there is no option that we have to go for a surgery and with medication it cannot be treated. Now, in case of a laser therapy, this has been given the treatment in case of open angle or angle closures with neurovascular glaucoma. So, normally if you see it lower the eye pressure, but it maintain the low pressure depending on many factors. You have to look at the age of the patient also, what type of glaucoma it is or any other medication may be present, you have to look for this. So, in order to reduce eye pressure, doctors, the attending physician may direct laser toward trabecular mass work. That means, the tissue near the cornea or iris that drain the aqueous humor into the eye or into the blood. So, you look at the iris, ciliary body and retina. So, that is what the laser therapy you prefer to use it. Now, as you see that we have a conventional treatment with alpha, drug acting on alpha 1, drug acting on beta, selective beta or prostaglandin inhibitors or we have a carbonic anhydrous inhibitors. You can see treatment alone and combination also. We have seen that there is also required to have surgical along with a medication or maybe both combined. Now, what happen in future treatment options? People use stem cell treatment in regenerative medicine. People are trying to have early detection to prevent the progression of disease that blindness. This is much required that is why that awareness is commonly done in almost every year. So, there is a future treatment is also available, but early treatment is much needed in the treatment of glaucoma. Thank you very much.